Hey everybody, this is Barry Rosen with our sneak preview of Career and Life Purpose. Um, if you've been to these kind of overview classes before, it's like the ocean in a drop. I try to take a little bit of every lesson that I'm going to do and give you some highlights, but also kind of teach you some some you know knowledge so that even if you are not going to be in the class, you kind of walk away understanding a lot of these issues. Um, for those of you, um, our format today will be mostly lecture. I, I do pause for questions. Um, it's hard for me to keep an eye on uh, questions that you type into the chat box. Um, I can look for them during breaks. Um, I can also unmute you at certain points so that you can have live mics and to ask questions. I, I will make that. For the most part, I, I, I leave the mics unmuted because I can't be interrupted in the middle of of a talk. Um, uh, this is my contact information. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I've been um, involved in Vedic astrology for over 32 years. I've written three books um, in the last year. Um, I've been teaching uh, what I call boutique classes the last five years. Um, I, I, um, in fact, this year I'm teaching a foundation course for the first time in about 20 years, but for the most part, I kind of teach more topical information, you know, relationship courses, and this course is on career, and uh, very kind of specialized courses that are very kind of needy. We just are completing a class on Rahu and Ketu, which is really kind of great psychological depth. Um, I, um, most of you know me from my blog on Facebook or on appliedvedicastrology.com, um, and I'm very accessible. Uh, and I, I try to be very precise. I, I one of my Strong qualities is being specific and precise because I think it's important when you're working with people to be very specific. Um, I, I always start classes with um, some chanting, um, and basically, it's one of the secrets I learned. If you do the chanting, then Ganesh does the rest of it, and you can usually comes out pretty good. So um, I do that with readings, and I do it with um, my classes too. So let's let's start with some chanting. You know, always to take your shoes off during Vedic chanting, like you're going into a temple. You want to slip them off. That's one of the things I've learned. Om gana shayana maha. Om gana shayana maha. Om gana shayana maha. Om gana patiye namaha. Om gana patiye namaha. Om gana patiye namaha. Bakrutunda maha kaya surya koti samapraha. Nirvigyam Kurame Deva Sarva Kareshu Sarvada Dhyana Mulam Guru Murti Puja Mulam Guru Padam Mantra Mulam Guru Vakyam Moksha Mulam Guru Kripa Sahana Bhavatu Sahano Bunaktu Sahaviryam Karvavahai Tejasvina Vaditamastu Mahavivishai Vahai Om Shanti 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 Om Aditaye Samaye Mangulai Buddhaye Cha Guru Shukra Shinitis Cha Rahave Ketave Namaha Honoring the Great Ones, Lord Krishna, as our Swati, Goddess of Wisdom, Vidavyasa, Cognizer and Writer Down of the Vedas, and my holy tradition going back to Brahmananda Saraswati. Um, I have many teachers. I'm particularly honoring Camilla Sutton, Sanjay Rath, and Bill Levesti, but there's so many teachers that um, have influenced my work. Um, uh, again, shameless advertising here. Again, you probably know about my book or have it, Finding Your Blind Spots Using Astrology. It's on Amazon. It's cheaper on my website, but hard copies on Amazon. Um, my work tends to be more spiritual, psychological, emotional. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to kind of westernize Vedic astrology. I mean, I'm not sure it's useful to talk about friends and enemies you know, um, anymore because that's not really um, what it's about. Um, um, and then my transit book guide, you've, well, most of you have. Um, so this class starts on uh, Saturday, is October 17th. The exact time of the class is going to depend on where around the world we have students. I, it may vary. I mean, I, lately I've been starting my Saturday classes and doing them between 12 and 2. It's possible I might move it to 3 to 5. Um, in the afternoon, that gives you the whole day to do other stuff. And it depends, you know, we get people from all kinds of time zones around the world, so I have to see. But um, I do record all the classes. 
So if you can't make a live class, you can always listen to the recording. Um, it's usually available within six to 12 hours. Um, and then for, for people, I, people have been asking me to do a foundations class uh, for years now. Um, I, I am starting when Sunday is September 7th. Um, it's going to be about 14 weeks. And even for those of you who know Vedic astrology, my goal is to provide kind of new depth into planets and signs and, and new ways of looking at things. I'm trying to kind of um, modernize uh, Vedic astrology so that for the Western mind. Um, so I'm 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 always always like the psychological depth that Western astrologers are able to provide, and and I you know Vedic astrology is much deeper. But um, so I do have a foundation class coming. There'll be a preview of that in about two weeks. Um, Okay, and then for those of you, again, another shameless plug here. I mean, if you go to my website under the webinar tab, appliedvedicastrology.com, the number, all my classes end up being available to watch on videotape at your own leisure. Um, Secret of the Houses, Secret of Relationships, Money Karma Remedies, um, Finding Yourself's Purpose, Dasha's and, and Transits, I've done, all, I've done everything. So take a look at it. Um, okay, so, um, I'm particularly indebted to, you know, I stand on the shoulders of many people. I'm particularly indebted to a number of people for this lesson um, and listed here. Um, now, I, I do, um, I can send you a, a black and white copy of the talk after I'm done. So um, sometimes it's easier to listen than to take notes. Some people actually listen by taking notes and certainly do what you need to do for yourself. but um, I, I, from teaching college for many years, I find that people take notes, they miss half the lecture because they're, you know, there's, there's a bunch of material coming out. So I suggest you listen. Um, I will send all the notes um, um, and for those who registered in black and white PowerPoint outlines, RTF format. So you can just print them out and look at them. It's just, it's just too hard otherwise to try to get it all in. Okay. Um, now let me tell you a little bit about the class. Um, just real quickly. So um, it would be arrogant to say that anyone can tell you your life purpose, you know, the God, but you can discover by yourself and a good Jyotish um, self-inquiry is what is needed. So my goal is to kind of teach you a number of different ways of looking and answering this question. And then hoping hoping that you will have the aha experiences within yourself. I mean, I can guide you. Um, I, when people ask me for readings in this area, I'm actually very good at it. But again, it, you know, you know, ideally, you know, your your higher self knows the answers. Um, and sometimes you just need a little bit of information to kind of like make the lights go on. And if not, certainly I can help you. Um, one of the um, there's two parts to the class. This, today's class is what I call the ocean in a drop. It's many different ways of looking at career. So it's kind of an overview of 14 lessons, but not certainly not all of them. Um, this, is, this class is kind of merging the spiritual astrology class. Um, I have that up on YouTube. I have the first lesson of that on Atma Quarica in depth. Um, and that will be the second lesson. And you can listen to that on your own. Um, the first part of the class is covering life purpose. And life purpose is understood best in Jaimini astrology. Um, um, I never, you know, I never knew anything about Jaimini astrology until about four or five years ago. Um, and Jaimini, Jaimini was, was uh, either Parashara's disciple or his son. And he, you know, um, at, in those days, you know, people would, you know, they didn't have, rec they didn't have videos and they didn't, they couldn't write that quickly. So um, they would create sutras, so they would remember a two-hour lesson in, you know, in one sutra, and that's how we got these sutras. And, and Jaimini um, also has a set of sutras called the, the Jaimini Sutra, um, and um, uh, the Upadesa Sutras. And Jaimini, um, probably, uh, Jaimini astrology is not separate from Parashara astrology. Um, it, it's just, it's probably that Jaimini is bringing out some things in deeper depth than the Parashara would talk about, but didn't they didn't get written down in sutras very much. So the things like the Charakarkas and 
and and and these, these, these other they're all it's all in Parashara, but it's um, his, uh, his disciple or son expounded on it. And there's a lot of soul lessons in Jaimini astrology, um, and I find it's just probably the best way of looking at life purpose. And and whenever I've studied it, I've just been kind of amazed at it. So one of the things, one of the principles in Jaimini astrology is what's called the Atmakarika, which I gave a lecture on about three or four weeks ago. It's on YouTube. I'll, I'll send you the link for it. And Atmakarika is the planet with the highest degrees in your chart. And it's the it's the king of this incarnation. Now, um, it, it, it actually is connected to the first and the eighth houses. So it actually brings in um, the, the, the purpose of this incarnation. And at the same time, it gives the deepest life lesson. So uh, one of the things that I, if, if the, particularly if the Atmakorica is afflicted, then it brings in difficult life lessons. If, it, if it's pretty strong, then it still brings in life lessons, but they'll be easier to kind of handle. So in a sense, it brings in a lot of eighth house energy and things that you need to learn in this life. We'll talk a little bit about that review it later in the lesson. But um, for those of you who have taken my classes, um, I'm expanding um, my information on this. I'm going to probably spend three uh, or classes on Atmacorica so that we really get it in depth because it's such a key thing. And it really tells us about the purpose of this lifetime. And you can see it in the sign placement, the nakshatra, the navamsha chart, and things like that. Um, one of the things that we're going to talk a lot about and have a whole lesson on is the Prashartas, which are Arta, Kama, Moksha, and um, Dharma. And these are connected to pleasure, Kama, business and money, Artha, protection of society, Dharma, liberation, and renewing and revitalizing outmoded values of society, which is connected to Rahu, actually. And then um, uh, Moksha, which is connected to, um, you know, release from the planet and enlightenment. And so, um, one of the lessons is going to focus on um, the, the five aims of life in your in your D9 chart, and that kind of reveals um, what the focus of this incarnation is. So, you know, some people, um, if if it's about um, money and business, um, you know, you're not interested in enlightenment, and you know, um, um, and if it's about comma. You know, it's all about relationship in this lifetime and getting your relationships right and it's not so some sometimes um it's kind of important to see this because it kind of can set up deeper understanding of, of everything else in the chart um we're also going to spend a lot of time on the navamsha chart and the soul's purpose in that we'll have previews of all these today we'll spend time on these what are called jaimini charts um they have fancy names you know i try to call them soul purpose charts and soul talents charts because when we hear these fancy names, Jaimini Karakamsha chart, Jaimini Karakamsha Rashi chart, you know, the brain shuts off. You know, basically these are soul purpose charts, soul talent charts, and they're very revealing. They're probably the most revealing thing you can look at for understanding your life purpose. And I'll show you how that manifests in my chart. Um, obviously, we'll look at the Rashi chart um, and the rising signs and how that connects to career. We'll also look at the sun chart. And, you know, Western astrologers are sometimes kind of ridiculed, um, but, you know, they, you know, they got it right in some ways. The sun chart is very important for telling us about our, our financial world, our career world, and it's certainly very important for career. And there's a whole system for understanding sun charts. We'll talk a little bit about that. The moon chart is also can be very revealing for showing the career that our heart most desires. So again, other different ways of looking at different charts. There's multiple charts to look at. And then the nakshatras, also can tell us something about career. Um, most of you who study nakshatras know that they're kind of caste connected to them. Sometimes the castes are kshatriyas or warrior castes, and sometimes they're um, Brahmin castes or priestly castes, and sometimes they're funny things like butchers, or which are, is really kind of a priestly caste. That, you know, they weren't. You know, Vedic Hindu society was not into slaughtering animals. They were sometimes they and ancient cultures sacrificed animals. Um, you know, for, for uh, spiritual purposes, but, um, and then there are um, also um, farmer, farmer castes and things like that. The Mars and Akshatras are connected to farmer castes. So um, I've, I've done some additional work on this and I think it's kind of revealing. I think it, sometimes we can have some clues 
certain nakshatras like the fourth nakshatra from the moon and the tenth nakshatra from the moon are very important for showing you career tendencies. So we'll look at that in a lesson. Uh, obviously, we'll look at the tenth house in the Rashi chart, but that house is really more about our attitude toward work. We'll talk a little bit about that today. And then there are other other ways to look at career from the D10 chart um, and the Varga chart, and then we'll put it all together. So my goal in this chart is, you know, is I, I, I sometimes can't find definitive answers in some of the Jaimini charts, um, and I always use them in that way. But I think we always want to look for threads. So if, you know, the 10 or 12 ways that we look at career and life purpose in the chart kind of point to one direction, you know, it's very revealing. Most sometimes th there's often a lot of cross currents, and you know you meet people who their soul has to do music or acting or paint, but they have to they make money by waiting on tables at night. So um, you know uh, you can sometimes see when charts are not coherent together. So you look at all these charts, and sometimes there's a schism, um, and we can see that when there's a, a schism and how to interpret that schism how to get through those blocks. So those are, these are one of these areas that I've kind of specialized in. I'm just kind of fascinated by this material. Um, uh, so the other things, you know, when we talk about life purpose, well, like so we talked a little bit about Atmakarka, which is the planet with the highest number of degrees, and that, that will reveal the lessons of this incarnation. You know, why am I here? Well, we, you may be here to learn about relationship. You may be here to, to learn how to treat your employees better. You may be here to um, to learn on violence. And those are things that you can see in the Atmakarka. Um, you know, and then we, we can just in, in generally think that, you know, if you have weak planets in your chart, and people always, I hate the word debilitated, but it means the planet has to work three times as hard. You know, if we have weak planets in our chart, those are things that we, lessons that we haven't learned, and we have to work on them. So, and people tend to kind of focus on their talent. So, if you have a debilitated Venus in Virgo or something, and it's poorly afflicted, you know, you're going to have relationship problems in this incarnation. And, you know, I don't have to tell you that, but the question is, are you working three times as hard and taking relationship seminars and going to marriage counselors so that you learn to get it right, or you just, do you just give up? So weak planets can kind of tell us um, what we haven't learned. Strong planets reveal our talent. So, you know, you have an exalted all exalted Jupiter or something, you maybe, you know, you're obviously here to teach wisdom and it's a talent you've brought in from past lives. Now, you know, it may depend on where it's placed and what the rising sign is, but um, you know, and that's something we have kind of have to think of. And the key and the key that you know I'm starting to sort out now is that I like to use the word Dharma, which is like, you know, getting it right in this lifetime. And Dharma is is, you know, doing the right thing. And and, you know, Dharma is so different for different rising signs. You know, Libras are a planet involving the senses and relationship and material world. And um, it has a set of planets that works differently. You know, it doesn't do well with Jupiter and wisdom, you know, it, and counseling. Um, it does well with its friend, with Mercury. So there are all these kind of sets of relationships. And we have to kind of remember there's a big difference between Libras and Pisces. Pisces are here, you know, about sacrifice and knowledge, and Libras are here to experience the material world and the world of the senses. And you know, they, there's so many different ways that they operate. Uh, that's something that I'm moving toward in my foundation classes. That I'm wanting to create a foundation course where we're really looking at that in super great detail, so that right from the very beginning of studying Jyotish, you're thinking, okay, Libra, these planets work these planets don't and this is why because Libras have to evolve doing things this way so um it's something um i may be writing a book about um so part the first part of the course is more about life purpose driving astrology and the purpose of this incarnation um the second chart will focus more on questions of career cast um the d10 chart the dishumption charts and the moon charts as i mentioned so um and then hopefully you can put it all together and you know, I can help you. But I think when I do these readings, I kind of look at all these things and I look for threads. And usually I find the answers in the Chinese charts. Um, so what are the basics of career anyway? Um, so if we were just talking about career, which is often like how to be happy in your job and stuff like that, 
Um, we have to compare, look at the six, the seventh, and the ten houses in the Rashi chart. The sixth house is everyday work and service. The seventh house is business and business partnership. And the tenth house is it's often business and being a boss. But the tenth house is also um, how we operate at jerk what work. What's our attitude toward our work? So, like, if you try to figure out somebody's career from the tenth house um, or the tenth house owner, you, you may get some piece of information, but you may miss the boat also, which is why, you know, it's a, it's a perplexing question sometimes in Vedic astrology. Um, you know, if you have more plants in the sixth house, or your plants are strong in the sixth house, you can move toward getting a job. Um, uh, and if if the plants are afflicted in the sixth house, then your job will torture you. And that, those are the people that come to me. They hate going to work every day. Inevitably, they have a debilitated Saturn in the sixth and they're just lazy, lazy, or they're tortured by work, or something like that. But if you have afflicted planets connected to the sixth house, or the sixth house lord, then you're just kind of tortured at work. Um, you know, planets in the tenth may show you if you have more independence and you can start your own business. There are yogas that show you um, if you can be in business for yourself, and we'll learn those. Um, I have a lot of people who want to come to me and want to start their own business, but you know, they don't have the chart. You know, they just, you know, there's certain certain things um, um, you know, that kind of indicate that. Um, and there are kind of other interesting things. People born during the day will have their blog influence their profession more than people born at night. So actually if you're born at night, the the tenth the tenth house, the sign owning the tenth house will have more influence on your career. If you were born during the day, the Lagna Lord will have more influence. Now I find this, you know, if you look at people, I mean, sometimes it's very easy. You know, you're a Pisces, you, you know, they, you know, they're teachers, you know, that's just Jupiter and that's what they do and they're Brahmins and they need to do that. Same thing with Scorpio, they're often Brahmins and teachers. Um, they're often researchers. So you can often just, um, you know, I'm kind of amazed that, you know, just how much is in the rising sign um, which is a simple thing, but it, it, it's not always that simple. And we'll see when we get to some more examples here. Um, so we're going to spend three weeks on Atmakarika, which is the planet with the highest number of degrees. And then there are all these kind of adjunct charts that come out. Of, um, and they all have fancy names, but um, if, uh, if you take the, the, the Navamsha chart, which is the chart of the soul, and you rotate it around the planet with the highest number of degrees, you get a chart called the Karakamcha Navamsha chart, which is a fancy name for you know what I call life talents chart. And you look at the life talents in the trines of the chart to see what you came in in this life and what you learned from gurus and things like that. So to me, the, the most important chart um, that I have the most success with is called the Karakamcha Rashi chart, which integrates um, the natal chart, the Rashi chart with the with this soul talent chart. And it overlaps them in a way which I'll teach you to do, you can do it by hand. And it's very revealing, you suddenly go, oh my God, the lights go on. And, and when I learned this, I was just, oh my God. Um, so I'm Scorpio rising, but everything is about me, Gem is, is about me Gemini. My, all my, my Karakamcha charts are Gemini rising and Jupiter and Gemini. And it's, you know, I'm a teacher and I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a I've got K2 in there too. So it's, it's very clear in, in those charts. You know, somebody just looked at my, I'll show you my chart in a minute, um, just to give you an example. I use um, um, I tend to use uh, Southern India. I apologize. I, I, I and I, I actually did Northern India for um, 30 years, and I just switched last year because um, I find it's it's easier for me to transpose charts. And you'll see that when we take the course. So I recommend learning Southern India. I can change it to Northern India. So here's my chart. I always, I use my chart because it's um, you know, it's easier for me to pull examples out quickly for, for 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 me. Scorpio rising here with Moon in the first. I've got Jupiter and K2 in in the eighth house in Gemini. Um, my Jupiter is stationary, and so I um, I call the famous that I'm a good teacher because I've got such a strong Jupiter. But the um, you know there are there are problems with it too. Uh, but the um, if you looked at my chart, I um, mean, you didn't know any diamond astrology. I would say Mars in the sixth, you know, chart ruler uh, for Scorpio. Mars is in the sixth house. Okay, you're kind of a, you know, you're a healer or you're involved in medicine or 
Um, a good friend of mine has the same chart. Um, he doesn't have a Saturn aspect, and he's a doctor. And I, I dropped out of pre-med. But, um, but, but in driving astrology, we actually find out that I'm ruled by K2. Um, Scorpio is co-ruled by K2 and Mars, and K2 is stronger in my chart. So my chart ruler is really K2 and Gemini with conjunct Jupiter. And so what do I, you know, so I've always been involved in teaching. I've always been involved in writing and teaching. I have a master's in comparative literature. I did my PhD work there to teach literature and film, which is another Gemini activity. I was a librarian, another Gemini activity. And now I'm involved in teaching Jyotish and doing Jyotish. Also, you know, Jupiter and K2 in the eighth house. But that, that's just that's just one small thing, but it shows up in a lot of the other charts that we'll see. I'll just show you those now real quickly. I've I've talked about them real quickly. So um, so these are these what are these Gemini charts. And what you do is you take the planet with the highest number of degrees in, um, in the chart. In my case, that's Saturn. And you see where Saturn is in the Navamsha chart. So Saturn in my Navamsha chart is in Gemini. Um, um, so that becomes the center of the chart. So it's because Saturn is the Atmakarka, the planet with the highest number of degrees, we rotate it to, um, it's in Gemini. So we rotate the whole chart around, we rotate the Navamsha chart around Gemini, and we get what's called the Karakamsha Navamsha chart, which is a fancy name for talents chart. So um, it shows me as Gemini rising with Mercury in the sixth house here. Um, now, I, I use this chart more for showing talents. The first, fifth, and the ninth house are the um, charts that I look at most in it. But I also look at the twelfth house here. It tells us Arish to Devata. But we'll learn all those things. Now, then if we integrate the Rashi chart with the Navamsha chart, we get what's called the Karakamsha Rashi chart. We'll learn all of this. I'm just going over it quickly. And so uh, this is this is kind of my life purpose chart in some ways. It's Gemini rising, which again is always about you know teaching and writing and um, knowledge and and obviously all communication. It's got Jupiter and K2 in the first, you know, obviously for teaching Jyotish, doing Jyotish counseling. The ruler of the Karakamsa Rashi chart is Mercury. It's in the ninth house, so it's connected to spirituality, and it's an Aquarius, which is a very kind of Jyotish-oriented sign of the zodiac. Also could be, you know, healing or something like that. So the trick sometimes with these charts is, is finding kind of um, multiple ways to translate them, because in a sense, like, I've done all the Gemini stuff. I've done, I was a librarian. I taught how, library science. I taught Comparative literature, which is you know Jupiter and Gemini and stuff like that, and and you know it's all here, but you know at what time does it unfold? Now I'm teaching Jupiter, so you know also Jupiter, but it, 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 I, I get a lot of bliss out of it. But anyway, um, we'll we'll learn all of this in detail. It's just kind of an overview of of how you know these Gemini charts are very powerful for revealing um, your life purpose. Um, they said life purpose is sometimes at odds at how we make a living. And people come to me and say, well, how do I make more money? And we have to look at actually either other aspects of driving astrology, the, what's called the, Aru the Aruta chart and the, and the uh, 11th house and the, you know, from, the, from the rising sign from the Aruta log now. But anyway, there, there are things like that that we'll learn, but, but there's, um, um, it, it's quite powerful. Um, one of the things that's kind of interesting is, um, this idea of nakshatras and castes. And, you know, in ancient India, um, you know, you were born into a caste, your father was a Brahmin priest, you learned to become a Brahmin priest, and you continued that lineage. Now, we, we still get some of that um, today, you know, in India, people are, you know, but, but sometimes we're born, you know, I, I do find that still people, you know, learn a lot from their parents and then continue their parents' kind of lineage on some level. But for the most part, we, we don't follow what our parents did because you know, caste is all kind of mixed up. And in, 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 you know, when we're not in Kali Yuga, then we're kind of, we're supposed to be a Brahmin priest. We're born into a family of Brahmin priests and it kind of happens. Um, now, so there, there are these kind of different 
casts in, in the nakshatras that are kind of interesting. Um, and I've got a lesson on this in the class, and this is one of the slides from it. So, so Anuradha nakshatra, which is in Scorpio, um, is, is a Shudra class. It's connected to service. And so planets placed in there may have an orientation towards service. And um, I have my ascendant in that nakshatra, and I am very inclined towards service, um, even though I, I, I kind of teach as a Brahmin, and I've always taught, um, you, know, um, you know, in that respect. But, but I'm always of service. And in in my company motto when I started my financial company was, um, you know, had the word service, serving traders since 1987. So I'm always about serving, and that comes across in my ascendant. Now, you can have planets in what are called outcast nakshatras connected to Rahu. Um, and outcast out, out, out nakshatras do things unconventionally, rebelliously, out in out-of-the-box ways. Uh, educator nakshatras are connected to, you know, obviously to kind of Jupiter and to Brahmins. Um, or you know, have to be involved in teaching and instruction in some way. Kshatriya nakshatras or warrior nakshatras, they have to be about protection. So they're the policemen and the judges and the lawyers of our society that uphold the law. And then you have the butcher caste, which they said are not really about slaughtering animals, but they're involved in mystical and occult transformation. And um, the merchant stars uh, have, have a strong money orientation and desire to material pleasure, they're connected to Artha. So sometimes the cast um, in the nakshatras will reveal something about the stars. For those of you who know nakshatras, here's a list of the nakshatras. Um, uh, the the, the, the kshatriya nakshatras are Pusha, Uttara Fulguni, and Uttara Shadha, Uttara Bhadrapada. The former nakshatras, I said, are all Mars. This is really funny, Mrigashira. Chitra, Danishtha. And when I talk to people, sometimes they say, oh, I, you know, I had one lady and she, you know, I, I work for this company about soil technology and I've always, you know, and then now she, she's working on, you know, starting a farm someplace. So, you know, it's, if you met her, you wouldn't see that, but it's it's definitely there in her nakshatras. And, you know, the, the butcher or sacrificial priests, are Rahu and Keti, are Ardra, Swati, Mula, and Shadabisha. They're, they're one of the more difficult nakshatras. They're kind of harsh, but they, you know they, they they have a kind of a role, and then the outcasts, which are connected to um, outcasts, you know, um, are you know are are not are frowned upon in India because obviously you know they don't follow the religious laws of their um, um, of their families, and you know they're going people who go different ways. Barney, Ashlesha, Vishaka, and Shravana. The outcasts have an important role because they change outmoded roles in society, which means, you know, so, you know, if, if we if we stay stuck doing the same thing all the time, then we, you know, the society doesn't grow and it's, it, it gets stale. So, um, you know, the, you know, all these all these nakshatras have kind of a, a role in that way. Um, so we'll learn a little bit about that. Um, and there's ways that I've kind of talked about kind of trying to color, which the planets kind of color each other. Now, one of the things that I've been working on with a colleague of mine is that sometimes you get these combinations on a first or a level, first or second level. So you have the planet, let's say you have, you know, if you have like Jupiter, which is a Brahmin planet connected to teaching and, you know, giving wisdom, if you put it in Pisces, you know, in, in, a, in, in, in Revati Nakshatra, you know, it's obviously going, it's kind of a very pure example of you know what you would call a Brahmin Brahmin, someone who's like a scholar, a researcher, a professor, a thinker, a healer, a hermit, you know, because it's 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 a, but we do we get these combinations now, which is why sometimes we get confused. You get, you know, you can get Brahmin Vaishas, you know, um Vaisha are the are the merchant classes. And so let's say you put you get Jupiter and you put it in Taurus. Taurus is a very material sign. You get people who are counselors, but maybe they counsel people about money, financial advising economies, remedies, um, you know, other types of counseling. Um, so you can kind of look at the various different combinations. You know, it's rare that you get a pure combination. Um, when you do, you get, you know, like Shudra, Shudra, Shudras are, 
the servant class. And when you get like Saturn in, you know, in, in a certain nakshatra um, or a certain rising sign, you know, then maybe you get people that are unskilled laborers, servants, miners, beggars, things like that. But for the most part, you get these kind of um, combinations, you know, and it's kind of fascinating to think about this and we're coming up with new ways to do it, getting out of the, breaking out of the box. Um, okay, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to do something unusual here. I'm going to take a break and see if I take any questions here. Um, I'd like to take questions. Um, I'm going to try to unmute you all um, and of uh, if you're if you don't need to talk or just mute, mute your own mic yourself so um you, you all have the ability to get on the mic and ask a question now and if three people do it at once we're in trouble and if you don't have a question that's fine you can also um type questions in the box in the chat box but um okay Jan could I ask a question? Yes, Jan. If you um, move in your chart, yeah, how then your um, your logna can change, correct? Correct. Do when you um, set that up, do you keep the same time zone, but you change? Um, the time that you were born to fit the new place. So say you were born out west and it was eight o'clock and you moved into the eastern area, it'd be two hours different. You would change that time to 10, but then mm -hmm. keep the same time zone? Okay, that's an, I have an article on that. Why don't you email me? I'll send you an article how to do it by hand. I have computer programs that do it. And I, and I have an article by Hank Friedman that explains how to do it by hand. And... Um, um, it's, it's a good question. I'm not sure I, I, I want to go into great detail about, about it now. And I, I have to admit I'm lazy because I've gotten, I press the button and the computer does it automatically. So I, I stopped thinking about how to do it manually, but I do have an article on how to do it manually. Um, so I, uh, email me and I'll send that to you. Okay, Jen? Thank you. And, yeah. And, and, you know, it's an interesting point because, you know, um, our careers and our, you know, stuff kind of sometimes changes. You know, we change doshas, and suddenly we're doing something else. The energy shifts. Or, for example, you know, most of my my beginning life, I was in the Venus period, and my whole life was about the arts and literature and writing poetry and studying to teach art and film. And suddenly, I went into a sun period, and I suddenly became a financial advisor, um, and I started studying Jyotish, and and. So, you know, your dasha, you know, the, the chart rotates around your dasha period. And so sometimes the, the new period will bring up a new 10th house relationship, a new thing for you to focus on. And that's, you know, that's it's kind of interesting. And when you move to that, there may be an influence on career, um, obviously. And I have a section on moving and career in my class. I have a few slides from it here, but thank you. Anybody else need to ask a question before we move on? Okay, so let's look at the workhouses a little bit, the 10th, 6th, and 7th houses. So um, the 10th house is the desire to improve through hard work, um, and the 10th house is the desire for status and public recognition. Um, and, and the earth signs are, are most material and support infrastructure. So the merchant class, or Vaisha, um, is purpose is to support the teacher's society to bring spiritual transformation. So, you know, you, if, you, if you've ever worked with, I mean, my temple priest um, is a wonderful man. You know, he can do these Vedic ceremonies in his sleep. He doesn't have a clue on how to keep the money flowing into um, our, our temple and, and to keep people, and you know, to keep the doors open and stuff like that. But luckily, there are people in, on the temple board who know a lot about business and they run that part for him. And, and it's good because he gets to be a pure, free person and not need to not need to learn how to kind of be a, a, a businessman. And sometimes we get kind of in today's world, we get kind of lost in having to do many things and it's, and, and it's okay. Um, and I don't know if there's any pure structure, you know, sometimes there are pure structures that exist. Um, 
the tenth house is is much more about command at work, you know, and showing uh, getting gaining command at work, and and it's um, the sixth house is more about the dis discipline of everyday work of going to work every day, and the seventh house is about business partnership. It's the tenth from the tenth, so it's connected to work. Um, you know, every every astrological house has its secret anguish, and the tenth house is, you know, it's about, um, you know, our dreams, you know, being a somebody, you know, I could have been a great actor, you know, there's that famous um, line in on the water house, um, on the waterfront, um, very famous Oscar movie, um, uh, Ernest Borgnine. If I, I'm trying to remember the movie, but I mean, I, I think I, um, he. he he didn't become what he wanted to be, and and it was kind of like you know, that anguish of of not fulfilling your 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 tenth house dreams to get recognition. I think deep deep down, you know, we all want to shine. The sun does has big bala and shines in the tenth house because when we have that kind of strength, we we shine, and we all want to shine at work. We want public recognition and status, and that's that's the tenth house. But but there's so many other parts to career and life purpose than just, you know, shining in public. Most people, um, you know, do, not everybody has a desire to shine at work even, but um, um, but the 10th house describes uh, and measures our life, are we a hero or a bum? And, and sometimes, you know, um, there's deep anguish there um, when people aren't able to, to shine. Um, the cusp of the 10th house is known as the Midheaven in West Astrology, that's the MC, and it's one of the most, you know, for uh, one of the most important angles of the chart. And the, the midheaven obviously, you know, is connected to high noon. Um, and so the sun, when the sun's shining highest in the sky, that's our 10th house. And that represents the sun reaching maximum glory and strength. Um, you can actually, you know, I've learned a lot from Western astrologers and when you actually calculate the exact point of the mid, the mid, um, the MC or the Midheaven, it sometimes can reveal a lot about um, career and planets connected to it. Um, like I said, everybody asks about career. Um, I mean, it's one of the most obvious, the most important questions I get in readings when people come to me, what's my life direction? Is it time for a change? I'm in the right field. I don't like what I'm doing. How can I make more money at my job? So so this is why we're doing this whole 14 week course because um, it's not something you can cover in, you know, one lecture or, you know, I mean, there's so many dimensions of it and it's something that, that's always fascinated me. And I have a strong 10th house. So I'm, I, somehow I, I have a real sense of all this stuff. Um, Sometimes the 10th house and the D9 chart is very important. It will kind of show you the soul's calling and, and um, it will kind of tell you the things that you're most enjoyed doing. Now, um, let's look at my, this is my chart, my Devamsha chart. Um, um, so my Devamsha chart is Virgo rising. Um, and uh, I've got Mars in the first year. It makes me kind of a military strategist, kind of karma that I've kind of inherited. But I, I was kind of a strategist, you know, helping traders and investors figure out how to invest. But um, you know, that, that's coming through here. But but my um, my tenth house is Gemini again, um, and and Mercury um, is in the sixth here, uh, in the third house here. So but, but again, Gemini even the sign that owns the 10th house in your D9 may reveal that which you're most drawn to even in your free time. So when I was growing up, I was always reading. I was always going to the library. I would love spending time in libraries. I could live in the library. I was, I was, you know, addicted to books. And then I was also into movies, which is a very Gemini thing. And I, I got a doctoral minor in film studies and the comparative literature. Um, you know, Gemini was, you know, always kind of a center of attention. Now you didn't, if you just looked at the Rashi chart, like I said before, it's, you know, it's Scorpio. Well, you could get research out of Scorpio. You could get, you know, being a detective or a researcher or, 
or a transformer or you know there's a lot of things connected to scorpio but but the essence of my chart is you know and all these other charts it's gemini all over the place gemini the 10th house in the Navamsha chart gemini in in the life purpose chart gemini in, in the life talents chart so um and it's no wonder i love writing and i love teaching and you know i'm good at it and and you know you know but it cries out in every aspect of the chore you know sometimes you don't get this kind of coherence it does work in my chore um there's always a big polarity between the 10th house and the fourth house the 10th house you know is 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 high noon when the, the most light and the sun's really powerful the fourth house is is midnight when we're kind of in bed and kind of you know, huddling under the covers and it's dark and eerie. And so it's kind of this security between the 10th, uh, this conflict between the 10th and the 4th house. The 10th house, you know, you know, people need to go into the world to shine. And if they stay home and they work at home, people don't see them, they don't shine. And so there's this whole thing about getting out of the house to, to work um, and, and versus staying home in the security of the home where you're not seen. And there's kind of an inherent conflict in them. And, and I find, um, you know, some people, um, whenever I get out of the house, there are times when I've had my office in the house, whenever I get out of the house, I always do better, um, and it just energetically. Um, and when I'm working at home, I'm kind of, the energy isn't the same. And some people like working at home. And you can, there are ways to see this in a chart, but um, um, I, I, in general, the, 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 the symbology is such that, you know, the sun likes being seen, so it needs to be out of the house. Um, because of the internet and, and internet businesses these days, you know, sometimes you can get on camera, you can be seen in your home, um, you know, and that, and that works these days. But um, I, I do find that you can shift your energy just by getting out of the house sometimes. Um, now, the funny thing about the 10th house is, um, uh, the planets in the tenth house may 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 actually show you show you your attitude toward work. This is in the Rashi chart and in, in the natal chart. So Jupiter in the tenth house may give you long wise perceptions. Saturn is too strict at work in the tenth house. Moon, Mercury, and K2 are difficult in the tenth house in the Rashi chart because they create confusion in the mind about how how we how we enjoy work. You know, K2 is always confused anywhere it goes and I, I get a lot of people coming to me about life career and life purpose and they, they always have k2 in the 10th house in the rashi chart almost almost always um moon if it's afflicted you know if it's, a, if it's a dark moon it's waning if it's afflicted by saturn or or, or rahu or k2 then it, it's very confused about work and it's not satisfied at work and mercury again is a very kind of fluctuating mental planet also put it with Saturn and it's not, it's kind of depressed about work, you know, put it with Jupiter, it does better and Mercury will take on whoever's with it. But depending on what sign, nakshatra, um, where it is in the D9 chart, you know, it, you know, but, but those, uh, our attitude about work, uh, how we enjoy work can be seen in the 10th house, not necessarily what we do. Uh, the, the ruler of the 10th house might tell us something what we, about what we do. Now, one of the things that, that's forgotten, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the course, is um, the sun chart. And I, I'm hoping that we can spend two weeks on the sun chart. I don't think we'll get to, but um, um, the sun chart is very important for, um, for work and for um, profession and for finance. And it gets lost now because you know, somehow we've rebelled against the Western astrologers and nobody looks at sun charts, but um, Sanjay Roth, I know teaches sun charts and um, one of his teachers has taught me um, how to look at sun charts. And um, so the 10th from the sun shows us the best karma profession for us and how we have to serve society. Uh, the karma we were born to do, it's called the Akasha Lagna. So the 10th from the sun will show you the karma that you have to do. Um, so what planets are placed in the 10th from the sun, what sign owns it, what planets are aspecting it, what nakshatras are involved. Um, and that will tell you uh, what you were born to do. And I'll show you some examples of this in a minute. Um, okay, I wanna, 
Now, the force in the sun is very important, and to me, this is one that I look at the most. It's called the Abhijit Bhava, or the undefeated place. Um, and it, it sustains all time due to Vishnu energy. So planets placed in the fourth house from the sun show the ideal path or profession, the best ideal job or career for substance. The seat of Indra and power shows uh, that which will prosper and not be defeated. It brings the blessings of the sun god. So it's good for, you know, if worst case scenario, you can't figure anything out you can choose planets, you know, planets in the sun is connected from the fourth from the sun and, and you'll be doing good. And, and, you know, on my chart, again, I'm sorry, I have to illustrate my, we could do, we'll, we'll use other charts in the class. Um, fourth from the sun, again, is Gemini, Jupiter and K2 here. So, I mean, I, I have so much coherence in my chart, it's really easy for me, but Force from the sun, um, Jupiter and K2, teaching knowledge, teaching judges, teaching wisdom, teaching spiritual wisdom. Um, that's what I, what my heart wants to do. What, I, what you know, that there's a lot of, of support for that because it's force from the sun. Tenth from the sun, I have Rahu in, 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 uh, in, in the tenth from the sun. Um, and, and actually I spent 25, 28 years, I still, have a business with financial counseling. And in this case, Jupiter um, is kind of a financial counselor. I have Jupiter and Taurus in my D9 chart. Um, so it, it moves. Um, and, um, but it's aspecting Rahu. And Rahu, you know, uh, Rahu is always interested in making money and, and scheming and things like that. But um, with Rahu here, I ended up being a commodity trading advisor. Um, and advising people about investments, and um, it's it's kind of it has a little it has a lot of Rahu energy into it, and that's something I've been struggling with lately. Is that I've been working with quote unquote gamblers, quote unquote Rahu people, and I've been moving more of my my energy toward teaching Jyotish and doing readings now because it's it's more tuned with my Dharma. Um, The seventh from the sun will show what we live for, and it shows the path of life and knowledge we desire. So again, we're, we can the, the, every planet from the sun chart tells us something, and we can do a whole reading from the sun chart, and we'll learn how to do that in the class. Uh, and then the moon chart, um, which doesn't get ignored as much in Vedic astrology, but I, I, it does. Um, it's getting more. I, I'm, I'm easy. I, I've never paid attention to my moon chart because I've got moon in the ascendant, so my Rashi chart and my moon chart are always the same. Um, but the moon chart, as you know, is very important. And sometimes you, all, all the Vedic texts tell us to look at the moon chart because um, as a second way of looking. Now, I always find that the moon chart is very connected to how we emotionally feel about something, how we mentally feel about something. Um, and, and the moon chart um, may... Uh, um, give a secondary indication for timing something. I, I, I tend to use the ascendant, the charts from the ascendant more, and the houses from the ascendant more, because they're more connected to the physical world and the concrete things. But the moon is important. And uh, the, the moon chart is very revealing also. Um, um, you know, if, if you have Saturn transiting the 10th from the, from, you know, uh, in the moon chart, it can create unhappiness in career. Um, 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 number of planets in the 10th house from the moon. And the moon um, um, will show the number of career paths. So examine the lowest to the highest degree. So sometimes, and this is unusual, and I have some examples in the class, sometimes you'll get, I don't have any planets 10th from the moon, but sometimes you'll get four planets 10th from the moon, which might show four careers that you have. And the planet with the lowest degree to the highest degree may show you the order that you do those in. And, and so it, it actually kind of works. I was amazed. Uh, we don't get to use that kind of information very much. Um, um, so we talked a little bit about signs um, in, in the 10th house and the D9. Um, and I, I went through this already. So sometimes just the sign in the D9 chart, um, now Los Angeles. Um, the sign owning the D9 chart may reveal uh, what you tend to gravitate most to. It might be, it, I tend to use it more for what people 
like to do, and I often use it for rectifying because I, you know, if if um, you know if Pisces owns the tenth house and the D nine, then the person is always involved in spiritual teaching and spiritual practice, and they spend all their time reading spiritual literature and studying the Vedas and things like that. But you know, the, whether they can do that for a living is is unlikely. But you, you see, there's a strong tendency to do whatever sign is connected to the tenth house in the in the D ten in the D9 chart. And then planets in the, in the D9 chart may give you additional information. And again, funnily enough, um, what did I study? I studied comparative, my doctoral work was in comparative literature. Rahu governs foreign things. Saturn governs foreign things. Venus is very connected to literature. Venus and Gemini. Was it an accident that, and I was always involved in foreign film. Um, since I was a teenager, I, I didn't like American films. I wanted foreign films. So, Saturn and Rahu and Gemini in in the in the in the in the D10 here with Venus, um, not an accident. And then during my Venus period, that was my life: Venus, Rahu, Saturn, Gemini. You know. Um, then we have we have something that's called the Amacha Karika in Jaimini astrology, and the Amacha Karika is the planet with the second highest degrees in a chart, and um, it's easy to calculate for anybody. You just um, let me go to my chart. Um, okay, so my Atmakarika is Saturn because it's it's a 27.45 Libra, um, and so it governs uh, this incarnation. It governs um, the purpose of this incarnation. Um, the Amachakarika is the planet with the second number highest degree. So. I've got Jupiter at 2639, which is under Saturn's 27 degrees. So, and there are no other planets, you know, that high in degree. Although my moon is close. Look, look at my moon. Is this 2636? My moon is what's called the Brachikark. It's connected to the third house. But, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, a day or a little, a little bit born a little bit later, moon would be could have even been by Aparka. But you see, um, you, you actually judge. Um, um, and there's a chart here in Sri Jodi Star that helps you with this. It shows you all the karakas and, and which one is which. So it says my moons, my, and we'll go over this in a minute. We'll have to spend a lot of time learning this. I'll give you some free lessons on this. But uh, the Amacha Karaka <clears throat> can tell you a lot about your profession. Now, again, a lot of coherence in my chart. My Amacha Karaka is Jupiter and Gemini. So Teaching, you know, I've been a spiritual guru. I've been a uh, Jyotish guru. I've been a teacher of anything. But Machakarika has is Jupiter, so it's very connected to teaching. And again, it's another coherent thing in the chart. But sometimes, the Machi, if the Machakarika is connected to the Sun, you might be involved in a musical instrument, to Venus, artistic, Moon. You know, so there are all kinds of ways we can look at this, um, and we'll spend a little time on that. Um, Obviously, the things that you know, I'm not going to repeat. I mean, most people look at the Lord of the Tenth and what, and the D1 and what house it goes into. So now, you know, there is information here, and it is accurate, and you, you can't ignore it. So I've got look at my chart again. Lord of my Tenth for Scorpio rising is Leo. The owner of Leo is in the fifth house. So I've got Lord of the Tenth in the fifth, and it's it's in Pisces. Um, so you know, funnily enough, when I was using BM, when I was first learning Jyotish, B.B. Raman's book, he used to say, oh, Lord of the Tenth and the Fifth, you'll be a stockbroker. Well, the Fifth House is connected to investment, um, and the Tenth House is connected to career. Leo owns the Tenth House, which is more connected to kind of speculative, you know, you know, Sun has a little bit of a gambler in it. Um, Leo, Leo is is, is you know there's a difference between you know what sign owns the tenth house in your chart, but um, so we've got Lord of the tenth and the fifth here. Um, now the fifth house is also the house of mantras and and things like that. So um, I did become a meditation teacher um, at age 21, and I you know I taught meditation for a number of years. So I was a teacher of mantras, Lord of the tenth and the fifth. Um, I later became a stockbroker, not a stockbroker, I was a commodity trading advisor, but I, I developed a newsletter, you know, advising people about investment or the 10th and the 5th. So, you know, that information is accurate, um, and, and there are some problems with it because the Lord of the 
fifth was in the eighth house here. So there's some, there were always some kind of ups and downs with it. But um, so we can look at those traditional things. Those are the types of things that you know um, if we're, if you study Jyotish. Um, but you know we we shouldn't ignore them. But they're um, and then sometimes you get you know what I call kind of oddities. Um, you know sometimes you look at somebody's chart here and say they have lower the you know, the Dustana houses are the sixth, eighth, and the twelfth houses. And usually you put planets in them, they have problems. But sometimes, you know, you may get these career oddities, like Lord of the Tenth and the Sixth, they make somebody involved in um healing, right? Sixth house, uh, aside from being a house of dead and stuff like that, it's just connected to health. So the person Lord of the Tenth and the Sixth may involve them in nutrition or health or healing or fitness or being a doctor, you know? So it doesn't mean that their career is thwarted because they lowered the 10 and the six. It may mean they have a, a, a career in the health profession. Lower the 10th and the eighth may put them in astrology and the physics. Lower the 10th and the 12th may, you know, it may be create, block, and anytime you put anything in the 12th, that the person is often blocked in their career. But lower the 10th and the 12th may have the person working in a hospital or a prison or another 12th house place like a monastery or a foreign country. So you can't always like say, oh, Lord of the 10th and the 12th, your career is doomed, you know, but it may mean you have a career in a foreign country. Um, now, um, let me stop for some questions here. I have a section just introducing Jaimini astrology here. Um, for those of you who don't know it, um, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, Catherine, um, I don't, um, hey Kathleen, I like the outer planets. Um, I, I, I use Pluto. I, I wouldn't ever use Pluto um, as the ruler of the chart, of, as the Amata, uh, as the Atma Quarica. It's just, it just, it's just something that isn't done. But I do use the outer planets, so I would ignore the outer planets. And then we'll learn in Jaime Astrology, we have to decide what to do with Rahu and Ketu because they go backwards. And um, I'll talk about that in a minute. Good question. Um, I think um, you're still all unmuted. Um, if you have any questions here while I take a break before we go to the next section, I'm free. Okay. So um, I want to talk a little bit about Jaimini astrology. And um, I, I, I have, I have um, as part of the class, I'm going to give you two videotapes that I've done on Jaime Astrology to introduce you to it. And I, I just um, uh, I explained at the beginning what Jaime Astrology is, is connected to Parashri Astrology. Uh, I find that sometimes Jaime Astrology is more revealing for soul work, and that's why I think it's really kind of powerful. And I it's kind of changed the way I do Jyotish now um, in, in, in looking at it in so many different ways. So the planet with the highest degree we talked about is the Amakorica. It governs the, um, the first house and the eighth house, actually, um, which is why it has this kind of karmic debt to bring into this lifetime. It's also naturally connected to the sun, the natural karka of the first house, but it's different in different ways. The Amacha Karka, which is abbreviated AMK, is the planet with the next lowest degrees connected to money and career, second, 10th, and 11th houses, and to the natural karkas, Mercury and Jupiter. The Vracha Karka um, is the planet with the third lowest degree, um, and it's abbreviated BK, and it's connected to the third house and to Mars. Now, if you study with me, the third house is just not siblings, although in Vedic astrology is very family-oriented, so you'll, you know, Every, they'll talk about fourth house mother, ninth house father, Mercury, relatives and uncles, you know, that kind of stuff, because they are very family oriented. And you need to know that. But um, third house is not only just siblings. Third house is also kind of primal desire. Um, it's connected to reproduction. Third natural sign of the zodiac is Gemini, which is called um, the tuna um, in um um, Mituna is actually, I think I pronounced it, Mituna um, in, in Sanskrit, and which means copulation. So Gemini is a very sexual house. Third house is a very sexual house. Um, it is connected to primal um, 
the, the BK is connected to primal energies, to, to fighting for a territory. What does Mars do? It learns to exercise its will and fight for its territory. And we fight for our siblings as we grow up. And Brachacarca is connected to the third house. The Matracarca is connected to the fourth house, um, naturally to Venus and the moon. But Matracarca is not just home and mother. It's, you know, it's a very kind of, it's, it's a place of, of feeling. It's a place of the heart. There's so much more to the fourth house. Um, Pitrakarika is the planet with the next lowest degree is connected to the ninth house, to father, to religion, you know, to all those things that you know about the ninth house. The Puchakarika is sometimes omitted depending on what school of diamond you use, and we have to kind of discuss that. But uh, it's the planet with the next lowest degree. It would be connected to the fifth house, um, which would be children and creativity and self-expression. Gnati Karka, which is called a GK, is um, you know the second to the lowest degrees in the chart, um, and it's it's connected to the difficult houses, to the sixth, eighth, and twelfth houses, the problem houses, and to the difficult planets, Mars, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, the trouble the troublemakers, um, but they do good things for us. Madara Karka is the planet with the lowest number of degrees in the chart, and so it's connected to relationship. To the seventh house, um, and uh, Venus for for men is a karka for marriage, and Jupiter for women. So um, now there is a disagreement um, on whether we should use seven or eight karkas, and um, uh, K and Rao like seven, Sanjay Roth likes eight. Um, I tend to go back and forth lately. I'm doing seven, but um, we'll have to talk about that. Um, so. The Amakarika, um, I have a whole, uh, the spiritual astrology course, which I was going to offer, which I still will offer. Um, I did a, a videotape on Amakarika, on the Amakarika, and I did a really good detailed, it's on YouTube, I'll send you a link. Um, it will go with this course, and I've pre-recorded it, um, and then I will continue with that information, um, because we want to go really deep with the Amakarika. But the Amakarika... Uh, it tells us the harsh lessons of this lifetime. And so people often ask me about life purpose. It's very connected to the Atmakarika. So the Atmakarika is about um, some of the lessons we need to learn in this lifetime. You know, um, I always use the analogy of Groundhog Day. Um, you know, that movie where Bill Murray is this grumpy weather person who gets lost in this um, town in Pennsylvania where he has to relive the same day every day until he gets it right. You know, it's a beautiful analogy about multiple incarnations and perfecting our lives and stuff like that. And so the Amakarika is kind of like that. It's giving us the lessons that we need to learn most in this life, and they're hard ones often. Um, and um, where the Amakarika is in the D9 chart, in the Rashi chart, when Nakshatra is in, what Pada is in, in the in in the denying chart, you know, um, what aspect, uh, it all tell us something about this incarnation, and we'll learn to go into very detail about that. Uh, for those of you who have taken and studied this with me before, we're going to spend six hours on it instead of just two. Um, so here's an example of the Atmakorica, um Mars. Um, so if, if Mars is the planet with the highest number of degrees in your chart, um, it actually has to learn, you know, Mars is a warrior. In this lifetime, it has to kind of usually learn the opposite. It has to learn lessons about defeat and patience and boredom. It's used to kind of achieving and conquering and going out. In this lifetime, it has to learn patience and utility. And so with the Amakorica, usually the lessons that we need to learn are the opposite of what we think they are. So it, it's, kind of, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of backwards. And so in the Amakorica, is Venus, it's you have to learn lessons about being in a relationship. When the Atmakarika is Saturn, you have to learn how to not cause suffering to others. Um, and so, um, I have a question from somebody here. Okay. So that was questions, question, okay. So anyway, we're gonna spend six hours on Atmakarika in more detail than anybody's done in a while. So. Um, we're going to really kind of, that to me is a lot of learning life purpose. Um, and then from the Amakarika, we get all these charts that we can see life purpose in this lifetime and whether life purpose is blocked. And I have a, 
I have a, um, I don't want to go into this in too much detail, but um, I, I, I will talk about some things in a minute. But um, in these gyromany charts, sometimes um, I'll show you mine. Now, mine is, is blocked a little bit, but um, Okay, so here, here's my chart. There's, okay, so we, we like to have coherence between the charts. And um, when there's coherence between the charts, then there's a chance the person can achieve their life purpose. So I, I have good coherence, but I don't have total coherence. So my Devamcha chart is Virgo and Gemini, um, which you know is connected to my Karakamsha Rashi chart, is definitely coherent with, um, with Virgo here. So my rising sign is Scorpio, and Scorpio has Scorpio. Um, so I'm Scorpio rising here. So Scorpio has an 11, 11 relationship with Virgo. So my Devamcha chart and my Rashi chart are coherent. There's an 11 relationship in terms of being able to fulfill, fulfill my soul's purpose. But my Karakamsha Rashi chart has an eight relationship to the Rashi. So there's kind of a, a a problem between like teaching Jyotish and taking care of my physical well-being on some level. There's an eight house relationship. So sometimes I, I have colleagues, sometimes they have, you know, their Libra rising and their, their Karakamcha Rashi is Virgo. And there's a 12 house relationship and they, they just cannot manifest their life purpose and they're very frustrated and to get remedies for that is tricky. But But that's kind of some of the things that we'll learn about how to look for coherence in all the charts, which tells us whether we can fulfill our life purpose. Um, now, a little bit more about Jaimini astrology. Um, um, Parashra talks about what are called Rashi Drishtis, which are the different aspects. Now, we learn Jupiter aspects, the first, fifth, you know, seventh, and ninth houses from it, and we learn all that stuff. But Jaimini aspects are a little bit different. And they tell us a little bit more about fixed karma. It turns out that the, um, the, the movable signs like Aries and Leo, and I'm sorry, the, the movable signs like Aries and Cancer and um, uh, aspect, uh, Cancer and Libra and Capricorn, they aspect the fixed signs, except for the one next to them. So there's, we'll learn some rules about that, but um, the, uh, there are more aspects in Jaimini astrology and they're more revealing about our fixed karma. Um, and we'll learn about the difference. And, and the dual signs aspect each other. So if you have this, I like the South Indian for this reason, you quickly remember, okay, the corners of the chart all aspect each other and, and then across from each other, they aspect each other. So very easy. Um, okay. So um, um, I, I'm actually, uh, I, I have a lot more detail here. I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, Trying to think what else um, I can give you without overwhelming you, because I sometimes these long presentations you get Jyotish overload on. Um, there are um, we will look at the at the D10 chart, um, which is uh, the Dashamsha chart, and um, and we'll learn how to use it. Um, so here's my Dashamsha chart, um, and it's also Virgo rising, um, which you know, may reveal something. I actually work a lot with farmers, and I'm very kind of, um, one of the things I do do is I, I write newsletters for farmers, and it's very funny that uh, this farmer thing just kind of dropped out of the sky when it happened. Um, but, and, and Virgo is very connected to healing and service too. So, I mean, it's interesting that my soul chart, that my, my rise, the rising sign of my, the Samsha Shore is Virgo, but, but the owner of Virgo, Mercury, is in Pisces with an exalted Venus and, and the moon. So um, this has created a lot of conflicts with employees at work for me over the years. Um, and some, sometimes with Mercury and Pisces, even though the debilitation is canceled here, um, I've, I've had problems with, um, I'm a great writer, but I sometimes have a lot of errors 
and um, that's the type of thing that kind of comes through here. It's kind of interesting. Um, so we'll learn a little bit about the, the D10 chart. Um, and their deity is connected to the D10 chart, which is kind of interesting, and different directions connected to the D10 chart. Um, and, and, the, and so it's interesting sometimes, depending on the deities in your D10 chart, you can actually get information about career and life purpose. Um, we'll also learn remedies for career um, in our final lesson, and, and there are mantras and things that we can learn different chants for Shiva that will enliven different aspects of career. And that's kind of interesting. Um, and then we'll also learn about moving for career. So sometimes people are stuck in a rut and they can't get a job where they're living and they naturally move because they have to get a job, but sometimes they want to know where to move. And um, there are, I, I learned this from a webinar from Sanjay Roth. Sometimes if you move in a certain direction, it will bring more success. And this is connected to the moon chart on um, the 10th from the moon. So um, we'll, learn, we'll learn about how to do this. It's kind of interesting um, and it's kind of practical. Um, so there's kind of so many different things to look at in career. I mean, um, I, I tried to give you a little taste of all the things that we need to cover. So half the course is going to be on life purpose and time in the astrology, and half the course will be going into sun charts, moon charts, Rashi charts, and sun signs, and and the D10. And there's some other things I didn't even talk about that we'll get to that are very revealing for ten. And time in the astrology, there's a thing called the Arudas, and the Arudas are uh, how we appear. Now I'll talk about my chart because it's kind of interesting. Um, so the Aruda log now, for those of you who know any Gemini astrology, is is how people see us, and you know how we feel. So I've got Moon in the debilitated Moon in the first house, and, and then by Rahu and Saturn. So when I was young, I could get easily kind of depressed, and you know, pretty difficult Moon here. Mars also, Mars helps it by aspecting it actually, but um, um, it's a, it's kind of a it's a difficult Moon. So inside, I can be kind of an emotional mess, but how people see me is I've got I'm ruled by Capricorn on my root log. Then I'll we'll teach you how to how to how to calculate this. My root log is Capricorn, and it's got Venus in the first house. And actually, Mercury is here also um, in the different house systems that we use. So we like benefics connect. You know, so people see me as this friendly business person. We're Saturn in the chart. So if we re rotate the chart around um, Capricorn, we see I've got Saturn exalted in the tenth house. Um, you know, so the pe people see me exchanging houses with Venus, Venus is in Capricorn, Saturn's in Libra, they're exchanging houses. So I have an exchange of houses between the, the first and the 10th house, which gives me a very strong career elevation, which actually I've always had. And people see me as this friendly business person in network. And it's also true, but that's how they see me. How I feel inside is I get really emotional and it can be an emotional mess and mental mess sometimes, but, but People see me as a success, as a as a business, you know, as a friendly business person, and they come to me for business because, and I really am a friendly business person. If you meet me at work, so our Ruta Lagna um, can show us something about um, how people see us, and that may impact our work, and and then it, it also may impact. Then there are other Aruta, so um, uh, I'm not going to go into that, but we'll we'll study them, and they also tell us more about work. So fascinating. So, so those of you who know some of the material that I covered, we're going to go doing 14 works of depth, 14 weeks of depth. And so we're going to go much deeper with everything. If you studied career with me before, if you haven't studied with career with me before, you're going to get all kinds of wonderful things. Um, there's all kinds of advanced knowledge that we can, we can come up with, but I'm not, um, you know, I may throw, I, if I have time, I'm going to throw it in. Um, Sometimes I end up extending the course for free for a week or something. But um, for example, um, uh, Parashra talks about these alternative lagnas called the Gyati lagna and the Hora lagna. And they're very revealing for career and income also. And sometimes you really need to look at them and they, they tell you a lot. So there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot, you know, it's a very complex question and people 
learn basic Jyotish and they look at the 10th house and they, you know, they get they're lost. And but but you can just see from this lecture, there's just so many things that we need to look at. Um, the signs governing signs in the 10th house tell us a lot about about what we do. Also, um, sign, the sign owning the 10th house, fiery signs, engineering, automotive, air signs owning the 10th house, intellectual writers, scientists, you know, water signs. You know, you can, you can kind of, there's this, every little piece of information in Jyotish is another piece. Sign owning the 10th house, you know, will tell you a lot. So I'll, I'll send you some of this information in the slideshow um, as a gift. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that um, you'll study with me. Um, let me take some more questions. So um, if you're interested in my class, um, I will send you a link to sign up. There's an early bird deadline. It's $295 by August 2nd, which is this week. Um, if you need a payment program, I know some people are on a budget. Um, I mean, most people use credit cards and that can be your payment program. Um, if you need me for a payment program, I can give you a payment program with PayPal, you know, two or three payments, depending on what you need. And, and that works. It is a 14 week class. It will go through December. So it's going to, uh, well, not, it'll probably end by the end of November, actually, I think. Um, and there, sometimes there's a week off because I'm traveling and, but, um, and sometimes people need a break from Jotish overload. Um, but uh, it's $295 um, early bird, 349 after the early bird this week. Um, I will send you links to get on. You can email me and stuff like that. So I'm, um, again, uh, for those of you who know know me well, I teach because I love to teach. Um, I obviously am not making a, a good living teaching. Um, you know, people don't spend a lot of money on Jochish these days. Um, I do it because I love it and it's, it's the, my most fun thing. I still have my financial business, which generates most of my income, but on the weekends, I teach Jodish because it's my favorite thing to do. So, um, is there anybody um, who has a, a question? Um, I, um, I didn't want to do a two hour talk today because I don't want to get too into Jodish overload, but, um, and, and I go rather quickly, but we will, I gave you an overview of all these topics and we'll spend two hours on nakshatras and we'll spend, you know, a whole day on the Karakamsha Rashi chart and life purpose. So, so you know, um, if you feel lost, um, you can re-listen to the tape, but but we'll spend a full two hours on, on most of the things that we talked about. Um, so I'm open to questions. Quiet group today. I, mean, I, I know sometimes it takes time to to think of a question, and so sometimes um, um, if you're, while you're thinking about questions, again, if you're if you're newer to Jyotish, you want to take my foundation class. It will be in September. Um, it is listed on my website, and I will have a preview for that in a couple of weeks. And again, for those who even know some Jyotish, it's going to be uh, have a lot of depth. I mean, if you spend you know, two hours studying Saturn, um, you know, you're going to really know Saturn. Um, we spend six hours studying the signs of the Zodiac and their intricacies. You're going to really know them more than if you quickly just, you know, had a 10 minute, 15 minute lecture on them or something like that. So we're going to, we're going to do a lot of depth and a lot of hidden things that you don't know. Um, Okay, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I will stay on the line for a few more minutes if anybody has any private questions. Um, Jan, you can email me and I'll send you the article on how to hand calculate moving to another city. Um, and uh, I don't know what else. It's Saturday and it's we're dealing with Saturn K2. Saturn rules Saturdays and Saturn K2 is Higher time to take a break, um, time to rest. Okay, so um, um, look forward to working with you all, and um, 
I'll send you some more information about the classes. And uh, Kathleen, did you have another question? Any trouble? Why is this not working? Jan has a question. Is that the same question? Okay. Um, some reason the control stopped working, typical Mercury retrograde, but can you do? Okay. Still trying to look at these questions. I don't know why. Okay, I got it. Okay. Um, okay, thank you, Jan. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, okay, so I'll let you guys go. Enjoy your Saturday. Um, again, the. Um, the, the class will not start until August 17th. It's even possible they start it. Um, and then there's that extra lesson on them. Um, so there are two lessons actually done for the class already. Both of them will be on YouTube, this one and the one I did on, on the Atmat Makark. And then we'll do two more lessons on the Atmat Makark live when we start. So that'll be good. Um, Jessica had a question. Um, Okay, yeah, uh, Jessica. Oh, oh. Yeah, sorry, uh, Barry. Will you also include astrophotography in this I, class? I am not doing astrophotography in this class. I do have a lesson on it in one of my other classes. Um, okay. And I can guide that to you. Jessica. I know, could could you just maybe share with people your experience studying with me? Um, yeah, so far that I have enjoyed uh, enormously uh, because you're so detailed and the information you offer really, um, you know, I, I haven't learned from anywhere else. So it, it has been a great pleasure. I've signed up all your, for all your classes that's ongoing. Um, you know, looking forward to this one. Okay. Uh, the, the, depth, the depth of the material is um, tremendous. I mean, that's, that's everything. Um, that I've never seen before from any other teacher. Thank you, thank you, Jessica. I, I appreciate that. Um, um, I, I'm actually yes. part of me is very shy. <laughs> got a lot of, I've got a K2 personality. You know, I told you I was ruled by K2. K2 kind of hides a little bit, and I I have to get out there more. But I'm, I I actually love what I do, and I do a great job with it. So that'd be great. Um, any other quick questions? Okay, so I'm going to end the webinar, and I, I look forward to seeing those of you who are here live in my class, and some of you I know are going to be watching this on recording and or on YouTube, and I'll look forward to uh, working with all of you. Take care. Bye-bye.